This is the most helpful piece of writing software that I use. You might not expect it to be, but it has changed the game for writing thrillers for me. As I've learned to write, I've experimented with a ton of different software, and I have opinions on all of them. By the end of this video, you will know which software and tools that I use after all of my years of trial and error, and which ones that I recommend. So you will have all of the information you need to choose the perfect writing software for you. Just a quick disclaimer, which software you use really comes down to how you like to write. Writing is an incredibly individual thing, and you have to figure out what works best for you. If you've watched any of my other videos, you will know that I am a hardcore plotter. I love outlining on whiteboards, outlining on sticky notes, outlining on my computer, outlining in Excel. So I tend to gravitate towards software that meets these plotting and outlining needs. But if you don't like outlining as much as I do, still watch this video because I'm going to be breaking down all of these different software in detail and give you an idea as to whether or not they might work for someone who also doesn't like to outline. So I'm going to start by breaking down all of the different writing tools that I use that aren't software related, and then I'm going to go into the software. So if you want to skip around the video, use the chapters feature. The first tool that I use to write my books is good old fashioned sticky notes. Just regular old staples, different colored sticky notes that I tape to doors and walls and desks and really anywhere that I can. Sticky notes are great for me in the very first stages of writing because you can move them and they're all also really great to brainstorm because if you don't like a particular idea that you have, you can crumple it up and throw away the sticky note. I use sticky notes while I'm brainstorming. When I write a book, the very first thing that I do is that I write down all of the big ideas that I have for that book on sticky notes and arrange them in sort of a linear way on a wall. Like if I have an idea for the climax, I will write it on a sticky note and put it kind of where the climax will be. And then if I have an idea for the beginning, I will write it down and I'll put it kind of where the beginning is going to be. And then every time I come up with smaller ideas for the book, I will write them on sticky notes and fit them in somewhere on that linear timeline that I've created on the wall. Then I can move everything around. I will also use sticky notes when brainstorming characters. For example, when I was coming up with all the different ghosts in my young adult supernatural thriller, They Stay, I would write down all the different archetypes that I wanted to have in the cemetery and literally stick them up on the wall. I would see them all the time because I'd use the door all the time. And every time I thought of a new ghost idea, I would write it on a sticky note and add it to the door. I recommend sticky notes for really any writer of any level, just because they're a great brainstorming tool and a great thing to have when you're in the initial stages of trying to figure out a book. The second writing tool that I like to use are index cards. I have also in the past used index cards to write down different plot points and arrange them all on a table. I usually do this for screenplays more than novels. What I do is that I write down every beat or scene on an index card and then I can arrange them in a linear format to figure out where I want things to be because I can shuffle them around the table just like I can shuffle around sticky notes on the wall. I don't like getting detailed when I'm writing on sticky notes or index cards. This is just a way to get my brain juice is flowing and coming up with ideas. The third tool I use is a whiteboard. I use a whiteboard if there are issues that I'm having with a particular scene or chapter and I have to do some problem solving. I usually don't use whiteboards to brainstorm because I use sticky notes for that, but if I'm having a problem, something about the act of being able to write things down and cross them out and kind of draw everything out on a mental map on a whiteboard really helps me. I have a big whiteboard that I keep up on my wall. If I'm gonna use it, I will take that whiteboard down and put it on the floor and just sit there and try to dig through this problem. Whiteboards are not a necessary tool to have. For some people, they work better than sticky notes when they're plotting. I also write messages to myself on my whiteboard, like little motivational things or quotes from the book if I ever want to. I like having it. It's a good thing to have. The last writing tool that I use that isn't actually software is a good old printed out copy of the book. I like printing out books and going through them with a pen and highlighter, marking things up on paper, crossing things out, writing notes to myself in the margins. Because holding the book in your hands, to me, replicates the experience of reading the book. I do big printouts for proofreads. I also do them when I'm doing line editing passes. I always wait to do this until the book is polished enough that I can get through it without stumbling too much on it. If it's too messy, it's just too embarrassing and painful to read. I just never can get through it. Doing this big printout is one of my favorite stages of the writing process. Because you can actually hold the book in your hands. It makes me really happy. <laughs> now, on to the actual writing software. I'm gonna tell you which programs that I use kind of in the order of how I use them in my writing process. So number one, Scrivener. A lot of people love Scrivener and a lot of people also hate it. I like Scrivener. I don't always use it and I also don't use it to its full potential. Scrivener is a word processor made for writers with a lot of fancy features. This is the Scrivener document that I made for a story that I wrote last year in quarantine. It was actually a draft of a project I've been working on for a while and that I'm still working on and finishing up now. As you can see, I only got to chapter 14 when I was writing it in quarantine because I realized the way that I was writing it just narratively wasn't working. But this is the Scrivener interface. On the left, you can see that you can make 
folders for every single chapter in the story and that will bring you to that particular chapter in your overall manuscript continuous document. And in each folder you can put scenes and that's just one lone document for that one little piece of text and you can write scenes in it. This allows it to be pretty organized. You can collapse all of your chapters like that if you want to. You can expand them all like this if you want to. In the right hand side you can write little synopses up here and then you can write notes and like different revision things that are here. There are a lot of things you can do with Scrivener. If you wanted to do character profiles you can create character profiles by creating a a character sketch and Scrivener has a built-in character template if you wanted to do that. You can put character images up here. You can do the same thing for places. You can put different place profiles and sketches in here. Again, Scrivener has a built-in one. You can do fancy things with Scrivener. It also allows you to format the novel if you are self-publishing, but I've heard that there are a lot of pros and cons with that. I've never done that, so I'm not gonna speak to how easy it is to do that. But that's why it says front matter up here because you know you can export it if you wanted to have it submission ready or if you wanted to, I don't know, whatever you wanted to do, you can do it in here. As you can see, you can also color code it. I have some chapters that are color coded in red because they take place in the past. And I have some chapters that are color coded in blue because they take place in the present. You can also see the entire book from a bird's eye view if you did this because then it shows you index cards that correspond to every chapter. And if you wrote synopses for your chapters, you could say like in chapter one, something happens. This whole color coding feature was pretty good for my whole past and present dual timelines thing because I could see how I was balancing the past and present timelines. There's a ton of other things that you can do with Scrivener, but that's basically all I use it for. I like using Scrivener because of three things. First, those chapters folders. Second, the color coding I talked about. And third, the progress tracker. In Scrivener, you can click up here to show project targets and it brings up this nifty little window that tells you how many words out of a total set number of words that you want this manuscript to be, your manuscript is currently. And then you can do the same thing for your session target. So let's say that your goal was to write 500 words for your session. You can keep this little thing up while you're writing and it will tell you how many words you've written of those 500 as you go so you can watch this bar get more and more and more full as you're writing. It is such a huge motivating factor. This feature alone is part of the reason that I use Scrivener to write my first drafts. Scrivener costs $49 for a standard license and $41.65 for an educational license. I use Scrivener to write the first and second drafts of my book They Stay, primarily because of the progress tracker. It kept me really motivated. It also helped me to put everything that I'd written before in a different folder so it was kind of like out of sight, out of mind. I don't personally edit as I go while I write first draft, so it really helped me keep going to have the progress tracker and also just to kind of forget about the stuff that came before. If you want to watch some more videos about what exactly Scrivener is capable of, I've linked some really great ones in the description of this video. Because the writing community is really divided over the Scrivener question, I would recommend downloading a free trial of Scrivener and just experimenting with it. There is a bit of a learning curve on this software, which is honestly the reason that I don't know how to do everything on it even now. I've used Scrivener for four years now and I still don't know all of the features that it has. The next piece of software that I use and love is Microsoft Word. I do all of my editing in Word. For they stay, as soon as I had a draft that I was really happy with, I moved it from Scrivener to Word. This draft had all of the main plot points in it. It still needed a ton of self-editing on my part as well as professional editing, but I was happy with just the general overall placement of things and I didn't have to do any other major rewrites except for the time that I changed the entire tense of the book and I did do that rewrite in Word but structurally like everything was there and then I moved it to Word. I like Word because I can see everything in the book as a linear document. I also work with professional editors out of Word because I can use the track changes feature which is super helpful. Again there's a lot of fancy stuff that you can do with Word but I don't know how to do most of that stuff and I just use it for the very basics. But I like Word because I can leave comments to myself I can color code things. I use Word because I get it for free through my college, but you could also use something like Google Docs or Pages and have the same experience that I do using Word. The third piece of writing software that I use is Microsoft Excel. This is the most helpful piece of writing software that I use. You might not expect it to be, but it has changed the game for writing thrillers for me. I love using Excel to outline my books. I obviously don't write in Excel because it's not suited for that, but I make what's called plot grids using Microsoft Excel. Plot grids are my favorite way
way to outline books. They're inspired by JK Rowling's outlines for the Harry Potter books, and this outline just really generally works great for my brain. As you can see, everything is present in a grid. You can track all of the plots and all of the subplots. If you want to learn more about how I make my outlines in Excel, I have made some videos on it, which I have linked both in the cards and in the description of the video. You don't have to use Excel for this, you can also use Google Sheets. I just use Excel because I get it for free at my college. I recommend this type of outlining for plotters, as well as mystery and thriller writers. If you're writing any kind of narrative where you have to slowly drop hints over a period of time, or if you have red herrings, or if you have a bunch of twists and turns that you want to manage, try using a plot grid. If this sounds interesting to you, go check out my other videos on it. And the last piece of software that I use is Pro Writing Aid. Pro Writing Aid is a great self line editing tool. I use it before I work with a professional line editor. Pro Writing Aid is kind of like Grammarly, except that it's more geared towards creative writing. It gives you grammar corrections, but it also gives you style corrections. This is what the interface looks like. This is the beginning of chapter one of a project I'm working on right now. On the left, it gives you kind of an overview of how the document is doing. And if you click up here, you can see different reports that Pro Writing Aid will give you. So if you wanted to have a grammar report, you could do that it will give you a style report. So it'll give you things like readability enhancements or passive verbs or repeated sentence starts or times that you're telling and not showing. It'll also tell you if you overuse phrases so you can go through the document to see what might be things that you'd want to change. The goal while using Pro Writing Aid should not be to get a perfect score on Pro Writing Aid because you still want things like your style to come through. So those are all the writing tools and software that I use. If you're still working on trying to figure out what's gonna work best for you, I recommend experimenting. Download a free trial of Scrivener. Try making a plot grid using Excel. Just play around with it and see what you like. Do you have any different opinions about the software that I mentioned in this video? Comment below and let me know. I read every comment and really appreciate everyone who comments on my videos. So if you leave me a comment, I will reply to you and it will make my day. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it and to subscribe to my channel. I post content sharing actionable writing tips with you every week. Have a good week, everyone. And as always, happy writing.